Sex is the only thing that is proven to actually induce labor because there is a chemical in semen that can and induce we, labor. We were so in locked in, not locked down, but in um, pregnancy. Um, yeah. Yeah. are better because your um, blood okay. vessels are thinner, right? All in. <laughs> I was like, guys, you can have sex. Your belly is like, they're like amazing. They are the so way. much. They Just are so know. incredible. Shh, don't tell mum. Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome to, to Shh, don't, don't tell mum. My name's Barney, and I'm Jamie, and this is the 14th most listened to parenting podcast in. What did I say? Egypt. Oh, I do that every time. Egypt. Do we do it again? Do we no. do it again? No, we don't. No? No. So we're well into the new year. How are you feeling physically? Because everyone kind of post-Christmas, post-New Year is a bit like, oh, and then it's like, let's go to the gym. And so they're in that weird seesaw place in their life. Where are you at right now? I'm definitely in the seesaw. Place. You're in the seesaw. I Yesterday, the glucose crashes you've been having the last two days. Yeah, so guys, I have joined. I'm on a health kick. January is all about health kicks, right? So we have bought AG1. Um, which is superfood for breakfast Athletic this morning. greens. Mm -hmm. um, I've joined Zoe to figure out my gut because this year I'm taking control of my health back because I have had a bad gut since I've met you. It's been Kind up and down. of, yeah. It always reacts differently to different foods, which is what we're trying to identify. So the two most popular podcasts that I would say most people listen to in this country and in the States have their hooks in us because AG1, is basically Joe Rogan's product that mm. he's been pushing for a long time. And then Zoe is a company that Stephen Bartlett has just invested in. But I knew about it way before Stephen Bartlett was involved in Zoe. I knew it before it was cool. So, so the it's reason okay why I, do it. I had hypoglycemia bef like when I was really little and when I was pregnant, it came out again. Because pregnancy, what it does is it brings out all those little issues that you have, underlying issues. So it came out and it hasn't gone away. So I keep getting these glucose crashes. So I've had it a few times last year where the doctor put me on like um, a blood prick. I have to prick my finger, test it and stick it into the, the mach this machine. But every time I did it, it would say, yeah, you're fine. I'm like, this is not accurate. Anyway, Zoe has given me this, it's like a Libra glucose tracker that you stick on the back of your arm. And I keep getting alerts being like, glucose levels low, glucose levels low, in the red, in the red. I'm like, oh, oh. And Bart's like, it could be psychological. But the other day when I was putting Rocket down to sleep, I was like, Bart, you're going to have to take over. I'm going to faint. And I yeah. checked my glucose and it was 3.1. And they say that if you are below three, you need to go to A&E straight away. So that was a bad crash. So that's just a little, uh, you know, a little sprinkle of what I've been living with for the past couple of days. So Jamie all being about... Like, Help me, Barney. Literally, she turns into Vincent D'Onofrio from Men in Black 1. Sugar and water. <laughs> <laughs> but I need... The thing is, is, I don't crave like gummies. I crave fruit, like peaches and oranges, things like natural sugars. And I'm telling you, health kick for January. What are you doing for your health kick in January, Barney Banks? What are you doing? Just Being an asshole. Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Health kick. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, um, in that weird, in that weird limbo that everyone goes in between Christmas and New Year's, I can't even remember what I did. I think I ate relatively normally. New Year's went on a big night out. Didn't go to sleep till like 5 a.m. And so starting off the new year, I was like, oh my God, I feel like garbage because it's the first and I just hadn't slept and I had to go home and parent because you were in the Caribbean living up your life. And I got you time. to do power zones, which is a really cool thing on Peloton. You did the power zone test. I did. You got to do a test and then basically they use the average output that you give on the Peloton bike and they use that in all of your other kind of sessions you now do on Peloton called? saying you are working above average or you are below average right now. Yeah. It averages out basically your own performance. So that's quite cool. So basically you are against yourself when you do a Peloton class now, not only other people. I wish I could just package my Peloton and take it around the world with me. You know what that's Peloton like should do? That's like the most first world thing you've said no, since New Year started. You know what like, Peloton should do? I just want do. a portable Peloton that I can take everywhere. If you have an account with Peloton, gyms across the world should let you use their Peloton in their gyms. So like if we, because we don't know whether we're going to Bali yet. If we go to Bali, I'm going to be Googling a gym you that has Peloton. You just like so I can say continue. things, don't you? And like, no one knows that we're even thinking about going on holiday to Bali. And you're like, so when we may or may not go to Bali and stuff like that. And I'm like, they don't know. Nobody knows. So, Jamie, we've been thinking about maybe going to Bali, haven't we? Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Okay, do you want to douche me down more, please? Douche you down. Right. I will douche you down. <laughs> Bali, guys, our second home. We love 
our home in Bali. Reason why is it will be my fifth time if we go back there. Every year we try and make it tradition for us to spend some quality time together because we're. It, it's really hard to be together as a three, <laughs> whether it's either me with Rocket, Barney with Rocket, and it's never us. We have one date yeah. night on Thursdays, which never, ever gets done. We never go on a date or night. Or we just go to bed at 6 p.m. because we're so tired <gasps> from but parenting, which is what you said to me earlier. Today's Tuesday. Your mum has Rocket tonight. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you said to me is like, we could go to bed at like 8 p.m. and just like And snuggle. then we both cheered. <laughs> we were like, like <laughs> What has our life become? Honestly. Literally. But we have a special kind of way of doing this episode today, don't we? We want to do something slightly different. Yeah. Topically. So we want to, you know, when everybody, before they have a baby or before they get pregnant, there's all these myths that float around, but we would like to do some myth busting. We would. For you guys. Things that we actually thought was true and then we had the baby or we were pregnant and we were like, oh yeah, that, that that's not the case. Yeah. So um, we're going to do those myth busters for you. And if you have any other questions, email us at itsthebankses at gmail.com so we can fire over your myth busting questions. Oh, I like are. that. That's itsthebankses at gmail.com. That's banks with two S's at gmail.com. And make sure you ping us your requests or maybe even stories like I thought that blah was going to happen when I was pregnant. Turns out I was so wrong. Mm. And we're going to bust these myths. So uh, do you want to kick us off or shall I kick us off today? Okay, I'll start. Oh, I'm sorry, actually. I don't even know why I asked you that. Can I preface this before we go into this? Just to show where my mind was at prior to even getting pregnant. Okay. That you don't know about me. Okay. Okay, so basically, we saw a, a, a clip recently from a podcast um, between Vogue Williams and Spencer Matthews, where Vogue found it extremely funny that Spencer Matthews did not know that there were three holes in the ladies' nether regions. Are you the serious, vagina, Barney Banks? The did you urinary actually, tract. Hold on, not... hold on. The vagina, the urinary tract, and the, and the bum. So those are the three holes. Oh I, funnily enough, didn't know that there were three holes until I was like 25. I think it was like a year before I So you met actually you. thought females peed out of their vagina? Yeah. I just, but like, you just don't know because you don't have a vagina as in I, as in I don't have a vagina. So I, how, like how, I didn't even get taught that at school. Who's meant to have told me that there were three holes? Biology? But I did, like, biology class isn't Are always you, around we the female about, anatomy. Yeah, but we learn about sticking a freaking condom on and about your pee and your poo. You should really know where the pee comes from for a female. What are you going to do if you had a little girl? Mad, right? Well, I'd have to learn. You'd be like, I? is it Which coming is... out the hole? Oh, no, not that one. Comes out the other one. Well, yeah. I, I would like, learn. I, we need but to have a girl because of this. Vogue found it astonishing that Spencer <laughs> Matthews didn't know this. And I was like, there are a lot of men that don't know this. A lot of And men. I played it to you in disbelief, didn't I? No, I was like, I you need to listen then, to this. But I I feel like I was 24 or 25 when I found that out. Oh. Gosh. So only seven years ago, maybe. First myth buster about the female anatomy. Anatomy. There you go. Yeah. So all the Thank men out there me listening, which actually is pretty minimal because we know that majority of our audience is female. How? Why do you think that? What is your is it, percentage? It's my ass, isn't what it? Is Let's be honest. <laughs> Come on then. Yes! What, is, what is your percentage between men and women on your like TikTok and Instagram? My TikTok, my male to female ratio is 91% females or mums. Yeah. Mums follow me. Mine's 80 they like the to 20. Because they like content. And men like the music for me. Yeah. So men is like the DJ side of things for you. And I think the women like the parenting stuff more. It just is what it is. It's fine. What's your first myth? What did you think? So this is, by the way, pregnancy or like in the infant stage, early ages of babyhood, parenthood. Um, I would say, okay, let's start with pregnancy. I'll do it in this order. So during pregnancy, I thought women couldn't have baths because... They were like, too gonna, hot. well, yeah, they were going to burn the like baby boil inside. the baby. I had so many baths during my pregnancy. <laughs> and every time I looked on the internet, it was just like, don't have a hot bath. Mate, he came out like dancing. He was so brilliant. And I thought to myself, oh, well, it couldn't, couldn't have been harmed from all the baths. The baths were great. They literally saved me. Oh my gosh. Like I would have a bath every night by the end. You did. I? Yeah. Our heating bill was back. disgusting. It would, it would just be the most beautiful thing. And I was just, I never made it like ridiculously hot. No. But at the same no, no. time, it was just, it was definitely my routine at nighttime was to run a bath with some beautiful oils, 
You have to be careful they, with the oils. They had to be beautiful oils, by the way. Beautiful oils. Um, and One then thing, though, I'd is, read is my... you're offsetting Wait, some of the gravity as well, right? Because like you're Stop in a bath, you're submerging. Me. You keep interrupting me. So the gravity is less. You're like floating. Okay. Yeah, that too. And I would read a lot about, you know, birthing your baby. There was a book out there that I'd read and it was like... Uh, baby in and baby out. Is something oh, I thought it was my George cousin about got me. Sensational sleeping lady. Sensational. Yeah, that was one of the ones we read. We had COVID in lockdown, so one of the things that we did during our time where we were stuck indoors for two weeks was read. Didn't we read? We read about fifty pregnancy books during the time. I'm really impressed with myself because I don't read at all. At all. I know. I'm literally the anti-reader. So your myth is that you can't have a hot bath or a bath when you are pregnant, a but actually. Bath. You can. Um, yeah. And I am proof of the pudding because I had one every night and it and was fantastic. I so don't let them take that, that away from you, girls. Do not let them take the hot baths away from me because honestly, it saved me so much. It gave me so much positivity during my pregnancy. I learned so much in the bath. It was great. She learned lots in the bath, guys. And I used to go into the bathroom to check in on you and she'd be sitting there or laying there, in fact, with the belly out of the bubbles with a cup of tea that rested on her belly. <laughs> and it's you fantastic. know what? We actually had a uh, water birth as well. We so did. he was literally born into water. And that brings me to my second. Can I just do my second? Ooh, getting spicy. Yeah, you can. Yeah, sure. I thought babies would swim out of the womb when um, if they swim. were Swim? Well, like in a water bath, they come out and be like, Yeah, and they could swim, and that's not the truth. Dude, really? Yeah. Babies are like potatoes. I know. Like I actually when they're born, thought, they're just like, I actually thought you could, like, when we did that first swimming lesson, I was like, He's going to be like the biggest fish in the world. Like, he's going to be amazing. Biggest, the biggest fish, fish in the world. world. Like, as in, like, I'd take him there, and then he would be like swimming. Like a duck to and water. At one point, I was like, Do I just drop him and see if he swims? And then I thought, Oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Good. Some people do that though, don't they? Well, no, they think their kid can swim. Their kid can't swim. That's a myth. Okay, so a myth is that kids can swim. No, so what it is, I'll tell you exactly. Oh There's a science behind it. Okay. This is um, this. You can do two after this because I feel like no, it's fine. I, I mean, this interesting, but the myth is what? I, mean, I don't know what the myth so is. So the myth is that babies are born knowing to swim. Okay, and that sure. is not the case. Okay. It's a reflex called bradycardic response, which makes babies hold their breath and open their eyes when submerged in water. Okay, makes sense. Um, pediatric, pe pe I can't pronounce that bit. Um, around a six months, babies placed in water's tummy down reflex, um, reflexively move their arms and legs in a swimming motion, which makes them look like natural swimmers. But if you let go of them, they can swim. Damn. People And the way that they teach some kids how to swim in the States, especially because everyone has a swimming pool, is they literally just push them in. And then they teach them how to roll over Your onto their back and that. breathe and then cry so that it notifies people nearby. That is so scary watching them learn because they literally just like push them into the pool. Especially like, if you've got your own pool. I would have loved to implement that for Rocket. So Barney Bunce, give me your first myth of the day. First myth of the day is uh, one of the myths that I think that it's because people talk about it so much and they talk about, um, you know, the lifestyle of when you're pregnant as, as a lady is that you're eating for two. And actually you are not. So I looked it up for the official answer so that I don't give any, you know, further myths to this. So the actual rough estimation is that all you need is an additional 200 calories throughout your pregnancy in order to sustain the excess energy that your body is burning and obviously growing a child. Some people have two portions of everything thinking that that's what they need to do. Or in actual fact, you'll just gain a load of weight doing that. We need these extra two calories, an extra 200 calories, sorry, 200. An extra 200 calories is literally like that much. It's like a and fistful. And you know what? Funny you say that. Of food. Because I actually, when I was looking at Mythbusters over the last few weeks, okay. I saw a completely different stat to that. So people might be BSing. They might be creating more myths. Well, it says that instead of having three meals, women should have seven. Whoa, but seven small meals seven throughout the day. Seven small meals throughout the day. That's so what bodybuilders do. They should basically snack and keep eating. Snackettes. What was your favorite snack what, when you were pregnancy? pregnant? It changed, didn't it? Which is actually on one of my things, but yeah. Which is, is what it? I'll do my next one for. Um... It changed. I mean, obviously, when I was in my first trimester, it was gherkins. Gherkins. 
Gherkins, people. I love gherkins, but it is an odd one. You were literally eating them by the fistful. So one of my That's things- That's how we figured out I was pregnant because yeah. he came in and he went, where's all the gherkins? And I went, <laughs> I, I ate them all. I don't know. I had this obsession with eating gherkins. And he was like, that's weird. And then I kept smelling weird things. What did I keep smelling? You like keep smelling shit. Yeah, it was poo, wasn't it? thought something smelled like shit all the time. And yeah, we like, I was like, what is that smell? No one has shut themselves, Jamie. Stop accusing people. So my, my other one was just basically that I didn't realize when you were like- Pregnant. First time you were pregnant. And uh, I didn't realize how weird the cravings get. So that's one thing that's kind of like a myth buster for and me. I couldn't I thought, have meat. I the genuinely, first when I heard people say cravings, I thought it was always going to be like chocolate crisps. Like, any, but the cravings were weird. So, <gasps> oh my god, do you remember that day? What's it day? Yeah. Oh my god. So I got back from being in town, <laughs> and I had it was I was picking you up from the station. Did wasn't you Google I? why this happened? No, to but we out. should. I basically picked Jamie up from the station, and I on the train on the. On the journey to go pick up Jamie from the station, the train station is about 10 minutes from our house. I suddenly started cramping up. My stomach started cramping. And I was like, oh God, I need to go to the toilet. I don't know if I had just had a coffee or something, but I was ready to go. You were like, I'm going to shoot myself. I'm going to shoot myself. So I went and picked up Jamie from the station in the car. She comes in, she's pregnant. And she's like, we have to go to a shop like right now. And I was like, no, we don't. We have to go right. We have to go home. I'm going to shit my pants. So I'm driving and Jamie like screams at me to pull into the petrol station. <laughs> so I pull into the petrol station. Past. I pull into the petrol station furiously. Like I'm going to shit myself in the car, Jamie. She runs in and it's like, I'm going to, I'll be back in five seconds. Just, just park up. She runs into the petrol station. I then get out of the car and I go around to the other side and I get in the passenger seat and I lay the seat down so that I can lie down and just think of England. Like don't think of anything i'm going to shit it's honestly like the, i think that's the worst i've ever needed a shit i was gonna die. the worst was gonna part explode. was i was running in i went to get the item that i needed more than anything life or death and my card didn't work so i had to run back and be like buddy what's your card where's your card i was like what's <laughs> your code point, i'm lying in the passenger seat like turning white like oh my god oh my god okay just think of something else <laughs> jamie I'm goes so in and buys pregnant. it comes back and i'm like you're driving so she gets in the car she starts driving home and i'm lying there like cramping up like sweating like oh my god i don't know what's happening to my body mm -hmm. and i said what did you have to get that was so important it was what sits and philadelphia cream cheese and bagels. you ate them in five seconds flat. You <laughs> dunked the Watsits no, into cream I cheese. Had, no, it was cream cheese bagels. Oh, a bagel. That with was it. With Watsits on top. With Watsits and cream cheese For on the bagel. For some reason, I need it. Like now I'm like, oh. You psychopath. I know. And I sat there while you were like throwing up next to me. And I was like, like with the biggest smile on my face. It was honestly the most, the weirdest experience <laughs> I think I've ever had. I got home. And I, I went to the toilet. I sat there for a good 20 minutes. And then minutes. you went and you were like laying down dying. And I was just like. I just decided to lay down them. on the I landing. I had to eat them next to you for some reason with my huge pregnant belly. Why did we not take a photo of that? That was honestly one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> Physically. Cravings, man. Medically, that was one of the scariest days of my life. I, I've, I can hand on heart. I can raise my hand and say I've never shat myself neither in public nor even at Happily, home. That's I haven't quite even had a result for I haven't even had years. like a, a, an accidental follow through fart. I've never done it. Yeah. <laughs> but that day, I think it's the closest I've ever come to, to that happening. So there you go. Weird cravings is one. And there's the story. Gherkins. What's it's the cream cheese on a bagel? I think what were the other? Freddo's was another one you had. I mean, Freddo's. Which is a standard craving for you. You love Freddo's. Yeah. Which we haven't had in a and long gherkins. time. Gherkins. Gherkins say you need more salt in your diet. So that is, yeah, salty, vinegary, you know, sharpness Apparently. is what you're craving. What's your um, next myth buster, Jamie? So my next myth buster was something that was personal to me. I thought babies were definitely more active until I had the baby. And I was like, the baby literally doesn't do anything. Yeah. Because I thought the baby like could interact and, you know, had really good eye contact and would watch things and maybe say a few words. <laughs> Say a few words. <laughs> Maybe walk a little bit to and fro. I literally had no idea about yeah. the newborn stage. The first six months, you are literally just looking after a potato with arms like and legs. Like a sloth. S Not a a sloth. sloth. Yeah, literally a sloth. They And they yeah. they lay there. They can't roll over or they lift their heads. So they literally just lay. It's like, literally like they're not ready to come out yet. It's weird. It's I'm like, like you need to be back inside like me. I hadn't yeah. cooked you long enough, even I'm though I was over. 
I was overdue by two weeks. A well and truly named bun in the oven. That's but that, I honestly, I honestly did. In, so did you think that as well? Did you think he was going to be more active when he was born? I thought that babies crawled very quickly. I thought that they like almost start crawling. And yeah, I, same. Yeah. I guess you just don't know until you, you experience it know. firsthand. And then I remember being like, oh, I'll have this really cute outfit and we can do like fashion days and go. Like literally they have, you have to be on point with the feeding as well. Like the minute they start crying. I remember the first outing we did with Rocket. We were like, right, do we have all the 50,000 milks? And the, the milks have to be so much like, right, we've got two hours of using this milk. If we go over these two hours, he can't have the two hours. And obviously we have to clean everything. Over, over these two hours. We of, can't have of the two the, hours. Of the milk, with the milk. Okay. We were so anal about it. This is why I liked breastfeeding because I could just stick him on the boob and we didn't have to worry about, you know, doing mixed feeding, which yeah. we had to do. And then we discovered Aptamel tablets, which were a game changer if you're on the move. Massively. Yeah. Two tablets with some water, shake it, boiling water, shake it up. Then, Thank you very much. And then cold filtered water, three ounces, throw a few more tablets in there and boom, there you go. Perfect temperature. You don't need a Tommy tipping machine. That. Yeah, those optimal tablets are good. And they're easy to like carry around as well. They come in like far, mm. a sachet of five and they're like really thin. And so they're so easy to pack a load Do into a bag. Do you think, question for you, young man. Go on. Do you think if we had a second, yeah. would you... Or if we had Rocket again, would you have done anything differently? Would you have the Tommy Tipping machine? Would you have done mixed feeding? Or would we have tried breastfeeding longer? I mean, if we have the second baby, what would you like to do slightly differently to the first? I think you, first and foremost, you need to take more time off. You went back to work very, very quickly. I you wet felt myself like you on the to. first gig. And this was, oh, actually, you know what I would like to do on the podcast? I would like to read that thing I wrote. It wasn't a poem or anything. Don't worry. <laughs> I wrote a thing about going back to work too soon. Okay. And this is one of the things that women are so unsupported in, in the workplace. Even as a freelancer DJ, I know that is not very common, but I feel like it's very common for women to feel like this coming, at, coming back into work after having a baby. Yeah. Can I read it? You want to do it right now? Can I read it? Yeah, yeah why not? I'll find it. While you find it, I'll do one of my ones. Yeah. So a big, um, you know, myth or maybe something that's an assumption that's had by a lot of people when their partner is pregnant or for both of them is about sex. So people thinking that you can't have sex when your missus is, is pregnant past a certain point, that it's bad for you, that it's dangerous. And almost every guy is like, oh, I'm gonna poke the baby in the face. I can't do it. First of all, baby is well protected. Don't worry. Even if you've, you know, even if you're hung like a donkey. Don't worry about it. A, you're not going to poke the baby in the face. B, sex is the only thing that is proven to actually induce labor because there is a chemical in semen that can and induce we, labor. We were so horny in, lock, in not lockdown, but in um, pregnancy. So, um, yeah. Orgasms uh, yeah. are better because your um, blood okay. vessels are thinner, right? all in. <laughs> I was like, guys, you can have sex. Your belly is like, orgasms are like amazing. They are the so way. much, they Just are so know. incredible. But yeah, I would say that um, there's chemical in semen that uh, can induce labor. That's one thing. Yes, sex is still very much enjoyable when your partner is More pregnant. More enjoyable. There's not going to be any damage done. Don't worry. Just obviously don't be stupid when it comes to positions. That you're you not going to decide. actually, you know, knock the head of the baby when you're, when the baby is <laughs> sitting low. And speaking of inducing labor, a lot of people think, spicy curries, eating anchovies, things that all you're doing is making the life of your midwife a nightmare. So don't do that. And the he only got thing that, that really tip. Does is Guess sex. how he got that tip from? His ex-girlfriend who was a midwife, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I didn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you also, if you talk to any midwife like at a hospital, like even when we were there, we spoke about it with them and they were like, yeah, don't eat curry. You know, and actually that was... It just was, makes it a mess when you're actually giving birth. You know what, actually, that was quite funny when we were trying to find a place to have the baby in London. Um, it was Paddington or Westminster and, Ch uh, and there was like limited places we could go because his ex-girlfriend was the midwife <laughs> at that place. And I thought, okay, well, that would be really awkward. Yeah. But hey ho, here we are. Paddington was a great yeah. place to have your baby. <laughs> it was. It, it was, was really good. good. So I wrote this thing. Yeah. Um, 29th of September, a few days before this, I basically um, was made redundant from a company that I've been working with for the last five years. Um, and 
yeah, I wrote this thing and I want you guys to hear it because it's technically about women going back to work and being appreciated in the workplace after they have children. So it says, I had a breakthrough. As I had been rejected for what felt so familiar, I came to the realization that this is what I manifested. Looking back to my 10 years prior to where I stand today, I was living with my dad and I worked with him doing the hours I wanted, which was hardly any. He gave me a salary and paid all my bills and mortgage and I was getting paid by his company. And I look at my young self and I get so mad as I took complete advantage of my parents' breakup and selfishly acted like a child and didn't even suggest to support my father. I know I have come a long way since then, but I have so much more to learn. I took work over breastfeeding my baby. And tonight when I got rejected from work, I got so mad with myself, letting myself go, dropping the ball with always doing my best, something I've consistently prided myself on. It was broken. But then I remembered how mad it made me doing the long four hour sets, traveling two hours, getting ready for one hour for 200 pounds. That's seven hours and roughly 28 pounds an hour, not including the travel fee. Less money than I used to earn five years ago. But the thing is, it isn't about money. It's about my baby. And I I put my work first before my baby as I thought I didn't have a choice. And just as I was about to meditate to win my work back, my baby let out a cry two hours past his bedtime, which never happens. I went up and was hit with a reminder that he needs me more now than he will in 10 years from now. The most important job I'll ever have is being a comforting mother. And I used to endure a job that didn't really need me there. And I chose that over putting my child to bed. Another day gone, another day further away from him not being a baby anymore and becoming a toddler. I have been manifesting spending quality time with my son and working productively for more than working longer for less work. And another factor was I had been doing this job for nearly eight years. I had taught the favorites that stand at that agency now. I got them the position to do that job and I was still doing that job too. And it frustrates me because I could see no progression in my work. Mundane day-to-day Groundhog Day music sets that didn't set my soul on fire anymore. And I remember rocking up to gigs and not caring anymore. As the new 31-year-old GM would say, you're new. And I would laugh and say, listen, I've been here for 10 years. But that didn't impress them. I think they were thinking, God, I wouldn't want to be in this position in 10 years. It didn't make me proud. And I think this is where the issue lays. Then my baby lets out this cry when I was about to wish it all back and I knew in that very moment the time with that job had naturally passed. The worst part of this all is I went back to work three weeks after I had my son and wet myself. Literally peed myself mid-gig as I felt I had to work. But I didn't have to. Why didn't I embrace the maternity where the most important thing in that moment is bonding with my newborn baby? I always said years before when I started my working journey then When I get a family, I'll quit the long hours, small pay gigs to focus on the family. But in reality, I couldn't just quit. I didn't have the confidence to stop as I had been so independent for the last 10 years. I almost manifested everything going back to normal. But why was I fighting for a job that has taken so much of me and given me little in return? And as my son lets out a cry, I go to his bedside for him to hug me so hard. I wanted him to understand how sorry I was that he didn't trust my instinct and I didn't give him 100% of me at the beginning of our journey. In that very moment, my son taught me that I didn't need that gig anymore. I needed him and he needed me and I needed to work on my new direction to get the results I truly desire. And there's a quote that reads, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I can't progress while doing the same things for 10 years running and expected different results. No wonder I burnt out. So in this moment, I resign and I say, dear universe, I resign to the mundane jobs that don't bring me happiness. That takes so much time out of me. Thank you for presenting me with this lesson. I will never let a situation go on this long again. I should have stopped doing the smaller gigs a long time ago. And like I said, once upon a time, when one door closes, another door opens. Yeah. That was good. So that was like... <laughs> Clap Jamie. I'm like, I feel like I didn't read that properly. But... No, but it's it's telling because it's... it's I feel like you should have read that. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a living... Pride and podcast. It's, a live, it's a, like a live and learn scenario where, unfortunately, you kind of had to learn the hard way of you haven't had people prior to you that have gone through a similar scenario that you know that could have told you to not go back to work that soon. 
who, you know, if, if you knew of, let's say, female DJs who had done the same thing in the past and then maybe had a conversation with them, they could have said to you, actually. But now that you've done that, yeah. you've explained it as well on a podcast as well, maybe you'll give someone a sense of comfort that then in the future, if they get pregnant and then they decide, oh, if they're freelance especially and they want to go back to work, to just take your time and embrace the, the moments with your kids. I think there are a few now that are breaking through DJs that have just had babies um, who are in the same situation that I've been in. I think it was more the fact that I was so disregarded yeah. as a person. I was just an item. And it's just because you've been pregnant or because you are pregnant, people are like, oh, so that's your career done then, yeah? And then oh, you're they like, assume and it then as And then you're well. trying to then break that stigma by doubling down and going, well, I'll go back to work after three yeah, weeks. Yeah, you're trying to prove, to prove your a point. Wrong. Yeah. And then you ended up missing out on moments wetting yourself on the gig that you went back on and, you know, causing yourself discomfort and then maybe stopping breastfeeding sooner than you would have. Well, I got mastitis. Because you got mastitis because you were pumping, like, I was pump everywhere you went for work. We had the LV and I was pumping behind the decks. And I remember I had a really bad infection and I asked for two cabbage leaves and they came over on a plate with, like, a tray with two cabbage leaves so I could pop them in my bra mid-gig during the time I take out my pump mid gig, this is like at a five hour gig. So it's a long time. And then I disinfected in a pot. This was before I even knew Milton tabs existed. Um, and I put it in boiling water and then I'd pop it back on and then pump again an hour. Cause you have to pump every like two hours mm. at the beginning. Um, and I wish I just kind of trusted you to, because I think at the time I was working more than you were. Yeah. We, we fluctuate in yeah, work. Yeah, we do, yeah. And I feel like I wish I just let you take control. And I'm an airy. So I'm very much like, no, no, no. I'll go and I'll fight. power through. I'll power through. Yeah. I'll, I'll push this. And I should have just been at the home with the baby for the first six months. In your mind, you had a point to prove though. And I didn't want to get in the way of that. I, I said, look, you know, if you need to go and yeah. do it, then you because can go and do it. Because that's been a supportive But I, I don't want you to go and do it. But if you feel like you need to and you, you know. You, there's this weird element of being a freelancer in, in the entertainment industry of being for, a fear of being forgotten when you are away for X amount of time. That's almost why when I was at the beginning of my career in the entertainment side of things, I would, you know, regret going on holidays because I wasn't around for every audition or every casting. This or, is why I'm scared yeah. to go away to like Bali if we go, because I'm like, what, what am I going to miss out on? Even though I look at my diary and I'm like, I literally don't have anything really for three weeks. We have, I have one inquiry on the 29th of january and i have a christmas party with our agency next week you're gonna miss out on this little thing we call life jamie we gotta go to bali and enjoy ourselves do you think we're gonna go i think we're gonna go yeah <sighs> we are the king, so. and, king and queen of lastminute.com like bye guys see you in three weeks it was Woo! so funny with the conversation we had when i was in turks i was like we need to go away he's like i don't want to go far i was like okay well why don't we go to miami no it's too far and i was like oh Okay, well, where are we going to go then? And I'm looking at all these places. I found Gambia as a place. Gambia, by the way. You can... Very expensive. Very expensive. It's 30 degrees. It only takes six hours to get there. And it's, and it's the hot. same time difference. So I was like, perfect for the baby, etc. And the Bali still was like six hours too far. Why don't we go to Bali? 18 hours. That's right, baby. We love Bali that much. We will always go back. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed our Mythbusters episode. Please yeah. make sure that you send in any of your myths that were busted that you thought were about pregnancy or the early infant stage. Make sure you send them to it's the banks at gmail.com. That's banks with two S's. Make sure you send them over and we'll read them out on our next episode Jamie and I won't cry on the next one but thanks guys for enjoying that I really appreciate Wearing it your heart in your sleeve there and you we go can't, babies uh, we can't thank you enough for that and we I think we all appreciate the fact that you read that out because it's nice for us to understand the perspective from you know the people who have been pregnant because on one of my myths someone said we're both pregnant not just you and I think that's a lot of horseshit the woman is pregnant no, they say <laughs> men you know men can smell pregnancy have you seen the woman? No, we're leaving no, it. No, Bye. No. Have Come you on. seen the woman that can smell dementia? Yes, I have heard of that. There's yeah. a lady that says she can smell And she can smell dementia. it before it even comes on. It's incredible. It's a Netflix series, actually. But anyway, check that out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> Shh.